Thanks so much for joining me for this webinar and overview of the Duolingo English test. I'm delighted to spend some time with you today. My name is John Nesbitt and I've been working with Duolingo for the past year and a half. Prior to that, I was at Vanderbilt University where I had the privilege and opportunity to come to India many times and recruit students and do some seminars and workshops on essay writing and, and got the chance to travel all over not only the country, but also the region. Um, I also, uh, in that time at Vanderbilt for 12 years, got the chance to lead the admissions team with my colleague and dear friend, Julie Chapman, and got to oversee financial aid and scholarships for the international uh, admissions process. And during that time, I recruited in exactly 60 different countries. And I loved the opportunity to get to see and learn about these different cultures and education systems. The commonality, and unfortunately, the common theme was that there were commonly obstacles put in the place of you, the student, in your journey to admission, to find admission into maybe a school in the US or perhaps anywhere in the world. And so I really joined Duolingo to try to change that, to try to address that problem <clears throat> head on. And I'm hoping that our test will really expand access in the world of testing and in the world of international admissions. So I'll tell you a little bit more about the test today, about how it works. Um, but for now, I'm going to stop my video and just share my screen entirely. So give me just one second as I do that, and we will walk through the agenda as well. So we'll tell you a little bit more about the background of not only the company, but the test, who accepts the test, and how do you share your results? How does the test work? Not only that, how the subscores work, a new feature to the test. We'll also talk about how to prepare for the test, because this is going to be a little bit of a paradigm shift as well. And not but Last but not least, we'll review some frequently asked questions. So first and foremost, a little background about our company. I'm sure some of you are familiar with us, and many of you maybe even have us downloaded on your phone or tablets. We are the largest education app in the world, the most downloaded. We have users in every single country in the world, and we teach languages for free. We teach around 40 different languages. In addition to that, we were founded by a really interesting guy. He's from Guatemala. His name is Luis Von Ahn. Uh, he invented things like CAPTCHA and ReCAPTCHA. Uh, but when he was an international student, just like yourself, he was growing up in Guatemala and realized, oh, I need to submit a TOEFL or an IELTS to apply to a lot of these universities in America. And he went to sign up for those tests and there were no more seats left. Six months out in advance, so he had to travel to El Salvador. And they're a little bit difficult not only to get there, but pretty dangerous back in the 90s when he was applying to college. And so a major hassle, a major headache, a lot of stress involved in all of that, not going to be necessarily the uh, getting the best foot forward and the easiest process. And so we kind of started to analyze international education today. And not only we're looking at a lot of English learners applying to schools all over the world and needing to certify English, but that certification, as I mentioned, was a barrier or an obstacle. Not only is it difficult to get a seat, as in the case with Luis, uh, but are the test centers very noisy and loud and hard to concentrate, even hard to get to the centers themselves. Even if they're in the same city as where you live, it might be very laborious to get there on time in the morning for that specific test. Um, and we also knew that those traditional testing options, like I just mentioned, were inconvenient. And so we wanted to solve a lot of those problems. And as I mentioned, we wanted to address access head on. And so a little bit more about our tests. It's convenient. You take the test online, anywhere, anytime. It's on demand. And so all you need is a laptop with a forward facing camera or a desktop with a camera. Additionally, it is a fast test. The test is around an hour and you get your results in around two days or less. You can then share it with any university immediately. And the test is very affordable. I mentioned that's a big theme of our test. It's only $49. But also, and I think this is very crucial, as very few of you are going to only be applying to three or four or five schools, correct? And so you're going to be applying and casting a pretty wide net. And as a result of this, the price of sharing those other tests can really start to add up. And so for us, when you pay for the test, you get your results. At that point, there's no more charges or fees. You can share those test results with as many universities as you wish. And then here's a little bit about how we compare to those other two larger legacy tests. You can see the chart on the right is us. And here's how we compare to the TOEFL and the IELTS. Much more affordable, of course, at unlimited locations. We have students taking it at all hours of the day around the world. It's around an hour. You'll receive your results in around two days. And then, of course, as I mentioned, you can share it with unlimited amounts of universities. You can apply to schools in the US, Canada, UK, Hong Kong, other countries around the world. And here are some 
a good, good range of universities in the U.S., from places like Arizona State, NYU, or community colleges, public colleges, liberal arts schools. Um, we have over a thousand universities accepting the test. And so the testing scale itself, I'm going to compare it quickly to what is known as the Common European Framework, or the Cepher scale. You can see on the left is our scale. We are scored from 10 to 160. These descriptors, or the scale of A1, B2, B, and C1, and C2, these are what's known as the Common European Framework, which is a pretty common testing scale that is used throughout the world to be able to codify and classify your ability on, on an English or on any language's ability or levels of skills. So you're probably curious, what do these numbers out of maybe 160 really mean in relation to, let's say, a TOEFL? And so what we're seeing is a lot of universities are accepting, you know, maybe an 80 or perhaps around a 90. That would mean around a 100, 105, or a 110 in the Duolingo. Or for some of your more selective universities that are looking for a 100 or even higher uh, on the TOEFL, then you're going to see a 120, a 125, perhaps a 130 is what universities are looking for in that range. Understanding the scores, again, just a cross comparison. If you want to look across other tests like the IELTS or even looking at uh, with the TOEFL as well as the Common European Framework, you can see how the scale correlates there. Again, the highest bandwidth is really 120 to 160 for our test. Around a C1 or C2 is what that's known as. Or on the IELTS, if you're more of an IELTS student, then you might have a 7, a 7.5. It's going to be correlating somewhere in there. The process overview of the test itself. The test is around an hour. They'll take it online whenever and wherever it's convenient. Maybe that's later at night, maybe that's early in the morning, maybe that's the middle of the day. Uh, you'll need to um, find a well-lit room, of course, and a private room where you can be alone to take the test. The certification happens over the next two days, and that is when not only is the artificial intelligence reviewing the test throughout it, the process live, uh, but there will be two human proctors also reviewing the tests uh, at different levels at different times throughout there to certify your results. Once you receive the results, you can then log back on to your Duolingo English test portal and then share the results with any number of institutions. The security itself, it's an adaptive test, and so everyone's going to get a unique testing experience. You'd have to take the test around a thousand times before you'd see a question repeated. So that's part of it, is that we just have an enormous bank of questions or item types that can come up. And so we can monitor these, not only if for some reason this one question was used too frequently, we could remove it, um, but we have that ability to also add more questions at any time through the use of things like machine learning. I mentioned that there's remote proctoring, so there's human proctoring as well as artificial intelligence, and so we're looking for certain behaviors, but the AI can actually monitor around 75 different behaviors. Uh, and so you get just an incredibly thorough security system that goes well beyond just sitting at a test center with someone monitoring your behavior. Additionally, we have all sorts of incredible data points that we are crunching and looking through in algorithms. It's a very high tech test, as you can imagine, to where we're able to detect rule breaking patterns, uh, perhaps of suspicious behavior, perhaps it was just a, a simple mistake. But if in the event that we do um, catch a student trying to cheat on our test, which it doesn't happen that often, but when we do catch a student trying to cheat, uh, we remove that student and they can no longer take the test with us. In the event that something just minor happened, you lost your power, uh, maybe the internet blinked out for a little bit, but you lost the connection. Uh, maybe your mom came in in the middle of the test to give you a cup of tea and you said, mom, stop. And the test, of course, we couldn't certify it because someone else came in the test room or maybe you lost your internet, like we mentioned. And so in that case, support will reach out to you with instructions on how to go ahead and retest. And we'll extend you a certain coupon code so that way you don't have to spend another $49 if something just simple went dry. I'll mention some of the rules you'll need to follow as well moving on. As far as some test security, you'll need um, some sort of ID, of course, to get started with the test, a state ID, a government approved ID, or perhaps a passport. Uh, we're going to be using things like um, verifying, of course, your test taker identity using biometric information. We also, of course, are going to have browser lockdown. So when you're taking the test, there's no second screen. There's no having other tabs open or anything else. The entire screen, uh, your entire computer will be taking tests at this time. No plugins, no headphones, nothing else like that. In addition to the test, you're going to get the chance to have a short video uh, up to three minutes in length. 
and then have five minutes to reply to one of two writing prompts. And so that gives you the chance to really express your opinion, show more about who you are. And I can tell you as a former university admissions officer, I really love this, the chance to get to hear your own voice, hear your own words and, and see your own words in your writing as well. Not only adds to the authenticity of your English ability and under, us understanding that you absolutely could handle the work if your score was maybe closer to some of the levels that a university was looking to accept. Uh, but additionally, it gives you that chance to learn more about these applicants, for, for the universities to learn more about you, your viewpoints, uh, and that can really help and go a long way. You might be wondering what's been happening since the pandemic. We, of course, have unlimited test seats because you take the test online. We have around-the-clock support in a variety of languages, and we also have 100% uptime, meaning that the test is not crashing. Uh, we have servers around the world to help and make sure that speed is never an issue. And we also have 24 seven support. So at any point, if you're having an issue, you're signing up for the test, taking the test, or you have a question, you can go on in the right corner and you'll see a big help button. You're also probably wondering how to prepare for the test because it's a little bit different from the traditional test prep mission or uh, uh, ideas and, and kind of theories where you're memorizing questions, you're really taking a whole lot of practice tests and you're really just grinding and doing a lot of repetition and memorizing and rote memorization and going over and over again. And then of course the test itself is pretty stressful, it's expensive and a very lengthy retesting process. Once you get the results back, if you have to sign up again, it can be months before you take it. And in many cases, it might be too late to submit it to a university. Of course, with our test, it's gonna be a little different um, because for us, there are no questions to memorize. And so what we're gonna do is provide you a free practice test. And this is gonna just kind of let you dip your toes into the water a bit and feel what does this test look like? What is it like to take a test online, a high stakes English proficiency test that a university like Duke or NYU might be using to accept you, what does this test feel like? Maybe it's the first time you've taken an online test. And so we want you to have the opportunity and access to these practice tests. You might notice that if you did them a whole lot, you're gonna run into the same questions. And of course, this is not a way to prepare you for what questions you'll see, but just more the types of questions you'll see. Um, it's a convenient, low-stress test experience, of course. It's affordable on-demand retest, as we mentioned. So if you don't do as well as you'd hoped, no problem. You can maybe take a month or two if you wanted to maybe read more English books or join some more clubs or just be around the English language more for another month before you took it again. Um, they recommend that for preparing it, you know, maybe even reading, as I mentioned, but being surrounded by the language can be the best thing to prepare yourself. So it's very different, but this also answers the question of access because these traditional test prep models require a lot of resources and money, correct? But in, in the world for us with the Duolingo English test, this is all free, and of course our test is way more affordable. So preparing for the test, like we mentioned, using your English skills, try to find ways to read, write, speak, and listen. Take our free practice tests, make sure you understand the test rules, this is very important, and prepare your test environment. You can't have a phone or a tablet. If you're gonna want a glass of water or something like that, you wanna prepare that, you'll wanna have power for your computer or laptop, um, and eventually you'll of course also have to then show your room and your environment to make sure that you're the only one in there. And then whenever you are ready, whether that's early, middle of the day, late at night, whatever the time of day is that's best for you, you will take the test whenever you're rested and ready. And again, it will take about an hour's worth of your time and in a couple of days, you'll get the results back. So that's what the free practice test looks like. I mentioned all this, so just make sure you're using the right browser. There's only a couple browsers that we work with so you can find any sort of FAQ online to prepare your environment. Also, some of the rules I mentioned, no headphones. You cannot look off the screen, that's a big one. You need to be looking at the screen the whole time because if you're looking off, that could be a chance for you to perhaps circumvent some of these rules. And so that's a big test behavior that we're monitoring. And then just recently, earlier this month, we had an exciting advancement in addition to our test. We added subscores. And so our subscores are a little bit different than your traditional speaking, writing, reading, or listening because we look at more of what is known as an integrated modality in the ways that you use these multiple skills simultaneously to communicate. And so thinking about maybe conversation requires you both to be able to speak as well as to listen. And lectures, sitting in a classroom is gonna require both strong listening skills as well as reading. And so our integrated modality subscores work like this. We have literacy, which is reading and writing, production, which is writing and speaking, conversation, which involves listening and speaking, and comprehension, which involves listening and reading. So those are our subscores. We've just added them. You can find more information online, and some universities will have some scores or cutoff requirements. 
And finally, let me wrap up with a few frequently asked questions. First one, is it better to skip a question if I'm unsure? No, you should go ahead and answer that question. Each question has a timer on it. Uh, and additionally, the test is adaptive. So when you lock in your answer, that is informing the test what your ability might be. And so it, it thinks you're maybe at a medium level, you get a lot of questions right early on, it's gonna start giving you harder questions. If you don't do as well in the harder questions or more difficult questions, it might drop you down a little bit easier. So it's gonna continuously adapt. If you missed a question early on, no problem, right? Uh, it's gonna have a lot of time for the test to continue on with that engine predicting your score and moving the test along. How should I pace the test? How long is each section? You'll notice that there's a timer for each question. Uh, the very end with the interview and the writing, which are both unscored, which the universities will in many cases watch or read, you'll have three minutes for the interview and five for the writing sample. Can I go back and review my answers? Kind of similar to the first question, no, since it's an adaptive test, once you click next, the question scored and the test engine, adaptive engine, everything, it's moving on. Can you take notes to prepare your answers? No, unfortunately not. You can't have notes, outside material, pen, paper, phones, anything in the environment when you're taking the test. Don't worry about getting a question wrong early on. Again, it's an adaptive test, so it's gonna continuously challenge you to try to see if it can uh, get, find the questions where you could get them right and prove that score right. So it's gonna continuously give you some harder questions, some easier questions until it zeroes in. And if you're getting a lot right, you're gonna get, keep getting harder and harder questions. Many people will take the test and feel like it's very challenging and that's because you're doing really well. And the test continuously is finding very hard and difficult questions to give you, to test your ability. No, don't worry, the accent is not a part of our grading model. So don't worry, it, it accounts for all types of accents. Just speak normally, speak clearly, try to enunciate and go a little slower. It's like anything, a test, an interview, perhaps a big presentation, you're always gonna go a little faster, right? So just try to take a deep breath and slow down a little bit and that will help you out as well. Will I still be processed for my student visa? Of course you will, yes. You're going to be working with your CSO at the university, your community officer of whichever university you end up being accepted to and enrolling next year and so, or perhaps in the years in the future. And so once you get accepted and start walking down that road to matriculating as a student, paying your deposit, signing up for classes, everything else that comes with that, you're also going to get your visa paperwork. Uh, and as far as getting your visa, that comes from the university, not from a test, not from an SAT or an ACT. Uh, doesn't come from any of the SATs, doesn't come from any of your TOEFL or your IELTS. The visa and the visa approval process comes from that university saying, we are vouching for you, we've accepted you, and you have a community here to join. Um, so yes, you will still be processed for your student visas. How often can I take the test? You can take the test twice up to 30 days uh, in that period. And then once that period ends, you can take it again two more times in the next 30 day period. Normally that doesn't happen too often. Most people take it once or twice, depending on how they did the first time. They're valid, your results are valid for two years time. You can pay for the test with a variety of credit cards. Um, and of course, if you have any technical difficulties, don't worry, we will let you take it again for free. Online, you'll find answers to these questions and more very interactive answers as well. I'd recommend you spend some time there. Again, I mentioned earlier, we have 24 seven support. Just click the right, on the right-hand side of the screen, click the orange help button to find 24 seven support. All right, thank you again for your time. I'm sorry I couldn't join you in person. Unfortunately, I'll be out on vacation and a few of my teammates are out is this week as well. So it has to be via video. Um, best of luck in your process and your journey as you are applying to schools in the US and abroad around the world. Uh, and I do remind you that you can go online to the Duolingo English Test website for more uh, FAQ, for more support to sign up for a test or to take a test as well. Thank you so much. Uh, and one more resource I'll mention is that as many of you work with Education USA at all, they are one of the many community-based organizations that we work with to provide free tests through our enormous access program. You can also work with one of your high school counselors who can reach out to us if you have questions about paying for the test. Thanks so much for your time today. Best of luck again. Bye-bye.